I'm back at Baba Blacktail Farm today to do some fecal egg counts. <laughs> I did this morning was I dug out a couple of these feeders okay so they'd have more space because they're getting to be broad yeah this is their last trimester the last so these month. are all this is the last month of their bread. pregnancy all not all of these are bred some of the maidens are in here too okay and my other task for this morning the fecal egg count and stuff uh -huh. I have some bags for you because you guys okay. probably want and I, I brought gloves baggies. and stuff too so here's oh, yeah, one way okay. to do it, mm -hmm. is to um, mm -hmm. just go like this, mm -hmm. catch whatever, okay. and then put it in like that. Okay. The shepherd is here, who is also our sheep breeder, Tess. She had some buyers arrive to look at some sheep to buy in the spring, so she's showing them around right now. So my new friend Sue, who is also a shepherdess, she and I are going to collect the samples. We're collecting fresh manure droppings so that we can look at the feces under the microscope and do what's called a fecal egg count. That's the count the egg cells that are in the manure to check the parasite load of the animal. The ideal way to do this is to have a bag ready or gloves and catch the manure as it's coming out of the animal before it hits the ground. So far we've not been able to work the timing out on that, so we may just have to collect some off the ground. We have a donor. She She started. She started but didn't finish. I might have scared her. Here. How about you, Daisy? Daisy, do you got any poops? Sue, I haven't seen any fresh piles on the ground either. That I would be good either. for samples. I didn't see it come right. down, but it looks fresh to me. Yeah, those look pretty fresh. Sue just collected about five pellets of manure. That's all you need to do in a sample, but in this case, it's off the ground. We don't know who it's from, so it's just unidentified. If we were to collect samples like that from four or five different spots, we would get a general sense of the parasite load for the entire flock. But again, it's ideal to get it directly out of the animal as it's being dropped or as it just hits the ground so you know exactly from whom it came. So Tess is back, and Tess, I just saw you glove up. What is your plan? The plan is we were not able to do a catch as many samples as we wanted. We've had a little bit of chaotic <laughs> morning with uh, buyers and such. And so buyers are always good. <laughs> but we need to get uh, a few samples so that we can do our work. And so I will just um, let, them, let them kind of put their heads through here. And then that way I'll be able to get, because all I need is about four pellets. Okay, who wants to be first? So you're going to Ready? manually extract some? Yeah, just get a couple pellets. That's okay. The benefit to doing it this way, you know exactly from whom it came. Here. There's what we need. Okay. That's, that's all we need, just a little sample. <laughs> What was the name of 600? Just put 600 because... Okay. I just want to, It's not writing real well. Here. Is so this fresh. a fresh glove now? This is fresh glove, yeah. What we did was we turned the glove inside out and then that gives us a way to keep that particular one. So. Right. And you're not, you're not cross-contaminating no. the sample that way either. No. So I just make sure that my glove is is lubricated and I've been working it so that it's warmer. What I do is I'll use this finger. All right. So I just kind of 
put my hand there and then feel and peck around until I find where does it gently go through. Because um, <laughs> otherwise you're going to be like poking, poking, poking. It's not very nice. So inside, what you're wanting to do is to, to go in and then do that, come here, do that motion just gently. So then I bring it back out. We'll use this as our sample. That's about the right amount because we're looking for four grams and that's eh, that's about five grams. So, like so. And then beckon toward you with your finger. You'll never think about that gesture the same. And there we have our sample. So we were going around trying to find a fresh sample and we just happened to look down. And is it four look at that. grams? <laughs> it is four grams. Here, just a second, just a second. Do I put it in a glove? I'm glad I could help. I put it in something. These are McMaster's slides. So these slides are such that they have a little grid on them. And that allows you to put a sample in. So we're gonna put the sample in this place and it slides down in there. And then that will get let us have a field, a grid on which we count. And we look in the microscope and we go down one and then up the next one and down that one and up the next one and you just count each time you see the little um, so this is three-dimensional there it's not just flat it's got correct yes yeah. okay. how we load it is we're going to we're going to make our sample we're going to do some things to get our sample and then I'm going to aspirate some in here and I aspirate up about two cc's and then just go like that and then the, the liquid goes in and goes in there. McMaster slide, that's gonna go on here eventually. So then the things we need are a little measuring thing like this, a larger measuring thing like this, uh, some, something to put the sample in, these are helpful. Um, something to filter the sample with, this is cheesecloth. Something to um, measure out the right amount. So we have two ways. We have, if it were a big mount here, or this is one uh, that's a lot easier because then I can just go like that and measure how, how large the sample is. And then flotation um, liquid. And flotation liquid, the, the whole idea of this is that the eggs are mi mixed in with all of the other organic material, the plant fibers and so forth. And so what you need is um, to make the eggs separate, to make them come up to the top. So we use something that has a specific gravity greater than water. And, that, and we all know that in the Salt Lake, everything floats and sea, everything floats. So we make a super saline solution. I checked it, you know, and it's this is probably um, 1.3, you know, and water being one. Okay, so the eggs in here are going to float at the top. So we put it together, we, we stir it, the eggs float up, give them a couple minutes, and then we draw them off with the small <laughs> measuring syringe and then load that on our McMasters and then look at the masters. So the whole thing is to set the eggs separate. So that's why we need a flotation. You can buy this stuff, but why pay money when you can just put salt or sugar or something like that to make it uh, a solution that will, will float your eggs. We, we wanted to mix this well. So we need a sample. Use gloves. So we're gonna take a bit of this so that we don't dirty up our scale. So we're going to weigh out four grams of pellets, a little squashed. 
So that's going to be about like that. So here's our mixing bowl. This is our cooking class. All right, so we're going to put our four grams of that. And then we need our solution. So our solution, which we've measured up. So cc's and milliliters are the same. So we're going to get some solution in here. So I just want to break up the fibers a little bit. And I'll let it sit for a minute. A couple minutes is good. And then, this is clean, so that can go there, because it did not touch any of our sample. And then we're going to do, do a little filtering. Because it's easier to look under the microscope at something that doesn't uh, have a bunch of fibers in it. This is just cheesecloth I could use cooking. So we just need to, to filter out the, um, the heavy stuff. Ta-da! We're going to let that set for two minutes. And in the meantime, these invisible eggs are floating to the top of the supersaturated um, flotation solution. And then the next thing we're going to do is to put that on our slide. Get two cc's of this. That's, this is a three cc syringe, so it's really convenient. Okay, that would be three. So we're going to get about like that much of this and we're going to load it into the McMaster's. So first thing was, you know, get your target where you're going to go to. And then I'm going to go kind of like on the top because theoretically they're floating on the top, right? So I'm just going to grab there some sample and I got a little too much. So I just go back to two. Okay. So I got two. What it is, is a slide you know, with another slide on top of it. And so we want to load this in the space in between. And we want it to cover all of the, the whole grid, okay? Okay, that's all we need. So what we've done is we've slid that s solution in between the two slides and we have this grid over the top, and that will let us count, because all we're doing is just counting the, the amount. Okay, so we just set our slide in. Okay, okay, that's just fine. So take a peek in there, and you'll see there's like a football grid, a blue football grid. Now I'm going to move it. Now that we're kind of in the in the lower corner of our grid mm -hmm. we're going to go like that so you see how this moves mm -hmm. that and this moves this way okay all right so what i want to do is start at one lower end and uh, i go to the bottom edge and i and i simply just move this up and as I go, I look and look and look and look and I see, oh, what's that? Oh, that's not. Okay, what's that? Okay, what's that? Okay. Keep looking, 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 looking. Okay, how many eggs did I see in that, in that little long uh, square, in that rectangle? In this case, I saw zero. So then what I do is move over to the next one and then go down. Oh, there's a really nice, these are some good bubbles. So when you look in there, take a look and see what those things are.
see the difference? Easy to see that that's not an air bubble. It's considerably larger than an air bubble, and yeah, the the darker center, the oh. oval shape. So when we have our um, our McMaster's slide, we count all the ones in chamber one, and we count all the ones in chamber two, add those two together, multiply times 50, or, or 25, depending on what our exact formula was. And that's the fecal egg count. And the fecal egg count, if it's up to 100 or 150 or 200, that's to be expected, so to speak. If it's higher than that, then I start wondering. And I have seen fecal egg counts as high as 1,000. That's from an animal that came in from somewhere else with, when I purchased it, and I wanted to see what, you know. At what point does it need intervention? It needs intervention at about 500. But what I'm looking for is how it is across time. If I had one who came in and she had a worm count of a worm load like a thousand, um, then I probably would consider using a mectrin on them because I need those done. I mean, when it comes to getting rid of the uh, the invader that's going to hurt my babies, <laughs> we do it. We get rid of it right away. That was a really neat, highly educational experience I had with Tess today. Little buddy, did you have fun with Grandma while I was at Miss Tess's place? Yes. Were you a good boy for her? Yes. Of course you were. There's something I want to show you guys real quick. One of our viewers, Billy Sherwood, sent me something. Yeah. Sent me this thing right here. Not really sure what you would call it. We'll call it like a head gate for chickens. I don't know. Billy saw our videos back when we were having issues keeping the pullets out of the heated water bowl. They turned it into a little day spa where they were soiling it pretty heavy. So Billy sent me this that I can put over the water bowl to keep the chickens out, but the space between the bars there still gives them enough room to get their heads in to drink water. Sit that on there. And I'll just wait a little bit, see if any of them can get their head in there to drink still. Looks like they should be fine with it, but I just want to verify. Tails, you think you can get your head in there? Go give it a spin and let me know what you think. I've been waiting for a while and I haven't had any takers at the water bowl yet. Because I can't wait out here all night to see what they do, I'm going to take the head gate thing off. We'll try again tomorrow. The issue with the pullets in the heated water bowl has pretty much resolved itself. We haven't had any more issues with that since they started using the roosting bars. So it's not a huge concern of mine to try and keep them out of the water bowl. So I'm just going to set this aside and we'll try it again tomorrow. Thank you so much, Billy, for thinking of us. I really appreciate the gift. It was a really nice gesture. Thank you.